morning, everyone. I am Pastor Eun Hye of Glenview United Methodist Church, and I welcome all of you. I'm so, so happy to be here with you at Glenview UMC Sanctuary. And how about you? Aren't you happy to be here? It's Sunday morning. We had the rain. It's a beautiful Sunday. Praise God. We love each other. We love the community, and we are so happy. Thanks be to God. And let's take some time. You can stand up. You can just and wave your people, friends, neighbors, and then pass God's peace. God be with you. And peace to you. It's just so good. And for vaccinated people, uh, mask is not mandatory, required, it's option. But let's be mindful, especially children still cannot get the vaccine. And we keep distance, they're mindful with the children, mindful with each other. But it's time we can move on and we can get together and praise God. And now let us open our worship with the opening prayer. It is good to be here today, Lord. It is good to praise your holy name. Our songs of joy celebrate your love in the morning. Our words of praise proclaim your faithfulness in the night. You have granted us courage to love people we meet at the intersections of our lives. Thank you, God. Amen. And we can sing low voice, really low, mostly this. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor. Neighbors are black and white. Neighbors are near and far away. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. So we have a few young Christians out there today, if you want to come on up here. We're going to stand today. Or they can, you can stay in your seats too if you want, and you can just talk from there. They're trying to, that's fine too. Um, or you can come on up. So we brought a few items today, um, and I want you to tell us what they have in common. So we have a mason jar with a lid that fits. <laughs> Sometimes that's tricky. It was tricky. Yeah, okay. And then the next one. We have a padlock and a key that works. Okay. Works. Works. <laughs> we have a bolt with a nut on it that fits too. Sometimes that's harder to find that right fit. Okay, kids, what do you think? What do all of those have in common? Yeah. 
Yes, is that Trevor back there? What do you think they have in common? They all fit. They all have something that fits. You're so smart, Trevor, figuring all that out. That is correct. But sometimes we feel like this. I worked on this all morning. I couldn't get this one to fit during rehearsal either. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't fit. And sometimes we feel like we don't fit in, right? And whether we celebrate Juneteenth, whether we celebrate Pride Month, whether we celebrate the 4th of July, we're all looking for a community and a place to fit, a place to belong. And that's the really thing the really thing that the thing that's really cool, there we go, about Jesus, right? Because in Jesus, we all fit. We all belong. Right? So sometimes things happen in life where our words and actions hurt other people, or other people's words and actions hurt us, and we feel like this. Like we're like all like, right? But what Jesus can do is he can kind of take away that like that feeling and turn it into something really beautiful. And so Jesus sees us for all of the beautiful people that we are. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in community. So like I said, regardless of celebrating Juneteenth, Pride Month, 4th of July, or all of the above, we are all a community in Jesus. So we're going to do an activity today in Sunday school. It's a tie-dye activity, if you can't see the theme here, um, where this shirt, by the way, is 40 years old, which is kind of cool, too, that I still have it. When we use the color blue, right, when you're driving, going on a road trip, and you see a sign for a hospital, what color is that sign? It's blue. So the blue color is going to help us remember that we have a healing God. And no matter what happens, we can remember that our God is a healing God when we look at that color blue. And we look at the color red, right here, we can remember that God's love is overflowing and that we are supposed to be sharing God's love. So before we head on, and we're going to do it outside today, um, in case anything spills, um, let us pray. Dear God, help us to understand that no matter how old or young, short or tall, no matter where we come from or what we look like, we are all part of you. We are all part of the same community. We all share joys and sorrows. Please help us to share those joys and sorrows with each other so that we can better understand each other and build even a stronger community in your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's head outside. Good morning. The scripture for this morning comes from the book of Romans 5, verses 6 through 11. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more will we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom we have now received reconciliation. The next reading is from the book of Luke 10, verses 25 through 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, what is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. Please join me in our prayer. Let us pray. A God of grace and mercy and healing and reconciliation, you brought us together this morning at this intersection that we meet each other face to face, even over the screen. And we lift up our hearts to share joys and sorrows, and we put our hope in you and each other. Thank you, God, for bringing all of us to this intersection, holy place. Thank you, God. Guide the meditations in our hearts. Wake us up and make us your people again. Amen. The whole month, as Ms. Peterson said, the whole month of June is a very interesting month. There are lots of parades and celebrations. June is a very interesting and meaningful time for us. And in June, I count to every Sunday that because there are so many that I don't want to miss, that I don't want to forget. The whole month is Pride Month, celebrating human sexuality and dignity. And there are Juneteenth, and the loving day, acknowledging and celebrating all human races, ethnicity, and their dignity. The state of Illinois and the federal government recently announced Juneteenth as a national holiday. The thing I was moved by this year's Chicago Pride Parade was that black and brown transgender people were on the front line of it, leading the parade and sharing their stories. The pride parade was stereotyped as a white gay men's movement, but it is changing and it is exciting. You may know that 
The Pride movement was first started by a black transgender woman who couldn't take the violence and hatred against the racially minority homosexual or transgender people. From the beginning, the Pride movement was at the intersection of race, gender, and human sexuality. It was just simply just small group of people celebrate. It is not that. It, it was happened in the intersection of race, gender, and sexuality. At that intersection, or on any intersection, humans are not just fighting against, or struggling with racism, sexism, classism, or the dignity of human sexuality. When we hear this, all these isms, first thing we think, we fight to convince others because we stand on either side. But not really. On the intersection, we meet each other face to face rather than fight against. That's the beauty God brings us, God's people, to the intersection when we struggle with all kinds of isms. At the intersection, humans meet each other face to face as neighbors, not enemies. As neighbors who have mutual, both sides, who have mutual responsibilities, human responsibilities, to listen to each other's stories and work for each other's dignity, human dignity, rather than meeting them as enemies who should be stereotyped, demonized, or just ignored. It's not that. God didn't create humans like that. Why do you think we usually try to avoid talking about racism or human sexualities? I believe we avoid them when we see each other on a linear line. Several years ago at a conference meeting, the host of the meeting asked attendees, I was one of them just attending, all attendees to stand up and position themselves on a linear line from the most conservative to the most progressive or liberal on the issue of human sexuality. I felt so offended and I didn't stand up, I was sitting like this. You shouldn't do that. That was the whole time I was thinking, putting people on a linear line that is so inhumane thing, in my opinion. On a linear line, people see others as enemies, or at best, as strangers, who are different and fearful because they stand on either side of the line or are far from each other. But I believe even the most powerful, successful, and the richest man in the world has stories of vulnerabilities. Everyone has experiences and stories of pain and guilt or shame or something that we need to share at the intersections. In today's gospel reading, we heard that we need to love our God, love our neighbors as ourselves to gain eternal life. Then who is my neighbor and who is your neighbor? Is my neighbor the person who stands right next to me on the line and then share the exact same beliefs, exact same life experiences, or political opinions, only that person is my neighbor? How about the person who stands on the opposite side of me on the line? And I have to tell the person my enemy? I refuse that. We can not be neighbors no matter where we stand. We can, we can be neighbors. It is a question that we have to ask ourselves again and again, not only to gain eternal life, but to live in this side of life as humans whom God created. 
The interesting thing about being neighbors is that we get to know who our neighbors, who our neighbors are when we go through some conflicts or difficult times, as we see in Jesus' parable of Good Samaritan. When the person gets robbed and beaten, some difficult time, difficult things happen to him, robbed and beaten, he meets his neighbor who comes to the intersection to check him on. Once I was appointed to a church, it was my third appointment in Chicago South Side. When I heard the name of the church from the district superintendent who accepted me to his district, I looked at the Chicago map to find where is that town, where is that church? Morgan Park, it was Morgan Park United Methodist Church. Morgan Park was at the south, at the end of south end of Chicago because my extended family members who immigrated here throughout 1970s and 80s were all settled in Skokie, Northbrook, or Des Plains. I lived north side of Chicago suburbs until I was ordained and moved around in the territory of Northern Illinois Conference. The Chicago South Side was really new to me. That was like opposite side. It was really new to me at that time. But the district superintendent told me he believed I could be a good match to the church, meeting people in the middle between any racial relationships as a non-white or non-black, just blah, yellow, brown, red person. And you can be a good match. The, the superintendent told me the Morgan Park UMC was a racially diverse church. I thought I had a big mission for the church, being a racial reconciler. I thought, wow, I have a big mission. Let's go to church like that. But just on the first Sunday, I was shocked to see how long and how well they developed loving, respectful, and sincere relationships among all racial lines. The first thing I realized was that I was not there as their reconcil racial reconciler. I was there to learn from them. There, I learned American history again from different perspectives. There, I learned racism, racial conflicts, and tensions can be transformed. It doesn't need to be fixed. It can be transformed. There, I learned American experience of slavery, racism, or human sexualities can be talked, shared, opened, and reconciled at the intersections rather than ignored or endlessly perpetuated at the opposite side of life from each other. When a white teenager came out as a gay, the church, or the black and the white members together, they came to the intersection to listen to his stories and other LGBTQ persons' stories. The church quickly became a reconciling congregation, and the people of the church became his neighbors. In the parable of a good Samaritan, the victim of the crime is a Jew. At least that's our assumption. The Bible doesn't say the victim exactly is a Jew, but that's our assumption. The reason is that because if he was a Gentile, the story might have mentioned him as a Samaritan, Ethiopian, or Amorite, or something like that. Usually, if it's non-Jew in the Bible stories, it says specifically what, what he is, what the person is. But without mentioning that, we just assume the victim is a Jew. A couple of Jews, a priest, and the Levi sees him. They cross over the they cross over the other side of the road and go on their ways. 
When a Samaritan sees him, he comes to him, to the intersection, and then check him out. The intersection was between Jews and Samaritans. And a victim or a helper, sometimes we, peep, we put people this line, oh, you are helpers and you are victims. And we want to stand on helper side, not victim side. But life happens. And sometimes we can be helpers, sometimes we can be a victim. And this Samaritan crossed that line, come to this victim. And he's moved with compassion for him. This parable is made of story, made of story of Jesus to teach the legal aspect, the lawyer who asked Jesus about gaining eternal life. Why do you think Jesus put a Samaritan in this parable? Because it's Jesus' parable, it's made of story. He could say a Jew, but Jesus says it was a Samaritan. At that time, in Jesus' time, Jews and Samaritans, they didn't get along well. All Jews didn't want to do anything with the Samaritans. And all Samaritans, they didn't want to do anything with the Jews. But Jesus put them together. Just brutally, Jesus put them together in his parable and brought them to an intersection of the journey of life. Not to shame anyone, but to show being a neighbor is a basic human responsibility beyond any concerns of race, ethnicity, gender, class, or sexuality. Jesus just put people together. That's how we are saved, by showing some concerns and mercies to the people we meet in our daily life journey. Many of us were shocked when we heard the founder of Girlfriend Foundation. She came, Barbara Silver, a couple of Sundays ago, and she mentioned that about 23% people in Glenview School District 34 are living on poverty. We were shocked to hear that. And we wondered why we didn't see them, why we didn't know them, maybe. We cross over the other side of the road from them, and we stay there rather than coming to the intersection where we can, we can see them, we can meet them, and listen to their stories directly. The most Im important experience I have had since I came to America, since I immigrated to America 32 years ago, the most important experience was killing of nine people in the Mother Emmanuel AMC Ch A AME Church in Charleston on June. It happened on June again, June 17th of 2015. 2015. On that evening, they were in a Bible study and a prayer gathering. Those nine people who were killed, including their pastor, and some other people who survived were good neighbors to the young man who killed them. According to the survivor's story, the young man came in to this beautiful, historical, powerful black church and joined in their Wednesday evening Bible study. They welcomed him. No one kept him in a distance. Oh, you are, you are white and I, we are black and you sit on the other side of the line. They didn't do that. No one kept him in a distance. So I gave him a hush stare. He sat with them almost one hour. They had open arms for him until he killed almost all of them. The, the Christians of, of the Mother Emmanuel Church showed me and showed all of us who was our neighbor. Our neighbor can be a total stranger, people of different skin color, different dress code, different accent, different beliefs, 
different age, different race or ethnicity, different theology, different political stand, or a person with mental and developmental disabilities, and even an ex-convict. Anybody can be our neighbor. As the person of Mother Emmanuel Church treated a stranger as God's sacred worth, we got to meet and treat everyone as God's sacred worth, dignity. That's a basic human responsibility beyond any theological and cultural concept of sin, guilt, shame, or fear. That's how we meet people at the intersection and become neighbors. In Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome, Paul says that we take pride, we take pride in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who showed us his love for us while we were yet sinners and the one Jesus, the one through whom we now have a restored and reconciled relationship with God. In this Pride Month, June, and every month, actually every month and every day, we take pride. Let's take pride for ourselves and for others whom God made in His, in God's image. The Glenview UMC is a reconciling congregation. And this is our faith statement. Following the loving example of Jesus Christ, we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person as a beloved child of God. We welcome into the life and ministry of Glenview United Methodist Church all persons of every age, ability, race, gender, identity, ethnicity, nationality, marital status, sexual orientation, family configuration, or socioeconomic or employment status. It is our faith statement. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, people of Glenview United Methodist Church who take pride in human dignity. What can be more prideful? We take pride in human dignity. Jesus promises us eternal life. We will have eternal life. We will. Also, Jesus shows and teaches us how to live this side of life with all kinds of people all children of God, God made in God's image. Let's meet people at the intersection and show mercy to everybody. So we will live, we will live wonderfully here and we will live eternally the other side of this life. Thanks be to God and let us pray. God of eternal life and eternal love, thank you, God, for putting us in this side of life and make us be happy, enjoy, be joyful abundantly in this side of life. That your blessing, that abundant life is for everyone. Thank you, God, for teaching us Help us to work for other people's human dignity and make us be angry when other people's human dignity was robbed and beaten. Help us go to those people, people whose human dignity was injured. Help us use on our money, resource, to help them. As this good Samaritan did. Thank you, God, for this life. Thank you, God, for eternal life. And at this moment, we take silent moment.
to pray for people in our hearts, in our congregation, in our community, and in the whole world. Because of your mercy and reconciliation, we overcome all kinds of shame and guilt of our history, our shameful human experiences. But we overcome that, and we join in the church. Your son Jesus Christ taught all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. At this moment, we give our offerings, tithes, and gifts. And when, we, when you leave, you can uh, leave your offerings. And at home, please make sure, go online and give. The best way to support our church and all ministries be on uh, um, automatic giving. Thank you for your support for the all ministries of our church. to share with you. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. Every fourth Sunday is Communion Sunday. We will celebrate communion here at home, 
please prepare before worship service that you print out the communion liturgy and also prepare any bread and any cup of juice that we celebrate communion. And next Sunday, first Sunday of July, I start the fourth year of ministry with you at Glenview United Methodist Church. And I thank you. Thank you so much that we acknowledge that we are a small church. And we don't need to be mindful. We need to be faithful doing ministry for God and God's people. And I just want to say thank you so much. Take pride being human, being a child of God, and go out to the world, being a neighbor for other people. You are loved and you are blessed. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.